I was in a coma for three days. The doctors didn't think I'd live. I was approaching death. On the third day, he came to me in a vision and he said to me, call me me Eunice and I'll get you better. Then I awoke from the coma. He's been by my side ever since. Fans came from all over the world to visit the house. Elvis and me was both poor children. He lived in the shack and I, I lived in the barn. I was born under a, a nolly bush in a, in a car park of a pub called The Rising Sun. His ghost still visits me daily. I'm very spiritual like Elvis. This is the home of Peter and Madeleine Wilson, and I'm sorry we can't get to the phone at the moment, so if you'd like to leave a message, please do so and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. God bless, and many thanks for calling. Elvis Gospel Ministries is an organisation which reaches out to Elvis fans with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. I listened to Elvis's Gospel music as a teenager, and all of his music, but along with lots of other people as well, Cliff Richards and people like that that I liked. But I became a fan in January 1995. I remember it clearly. I was watching some of the films of Elvis. It was his 60th birthday celebrations on TV. They had different films, documentaries. And I just wept for a week. And I thought, what on earth is going on here? And being a Christian, I was a Christian by then, I knew that God was in it somewhere. The end times are the times when God is going to bring, or the end time, when God is going to bring everything to a close, and then there will be the new heaven and the new earth. Elvis knew about the end times, but the Bible says that the end times are when there's wars and rumours of wars and pestilence. But I think we can see nowadays that there's more all over the world. So yes, things are drawing to a close. Elvis, as far as I understand from speaking to people who knew him and knew about his spirituality, did study the book of Revelation a lot. He knew about the end times. I believe he knew. Yes, we are in the end times. I think he'd see the problems that people face all over the world. The major ones, I do believe, are loneliness and the feeling of not being loved and people getting very depressed. But when you know that you loved us, Elvis did, but then we drift in and out of it sometimes depending on our experiences. But if we can have that faith of constantly knowing that we're loved passionately by a loving God, that can see us through everything. You may start your message now. Oh, this is Elvis. I changed my name from Terry Brown to Elvis, Elvis in 1981. Elvis Presley is more important to me and to all the other Elvis fans. He's the best one, he's the king, he's still living on, living on in memory of everybody else. It, these groups are no good today, it is the king. Elvis is the king, but Shaggy Stevens is really good. Elvis is the king, but Shaggy Stevens is really good. I never met Elvis, but I had this on the computer, this picture. Put that together. And it, it comes to this, and it comes like that. It's nice. I coach an Elvis impersonator called Rocky. I had one before him, but he left. I was broken hearted when it happened. I had the blue jumpsuit made for him. It does not fit Rocky. Before I impersonated Elvis, I was a still worker for 12 years. Uh, I got my redundancy and he turned around with me to get another job, manual work. So I turned to singing. Still worker turns to Elvis. <laughs> the oldest memory I've got of music is probably Elvis singing Hound Dog or Blue Suede Shoes, you know. I just can't ever remember not being an Elvis fan. Um, so I've got recordings of me singing Elvis songs when I was seven. I can't uh, 
I've just, I've just always been into Elvis, just always. I have to practice a lot for, for performance, um, to get things right. Sometimes that can feel right in yourself, but when you look at yourself in a mirror, it don't look right. It's difficult. Elvis impersonators in general, some, some are good, some are ridiculous, but the, the upsetting factor is 90% that do it look like a joke and 10% do it seriously. And I can actually say out of the 20 that I've seen, there's only two that I would say uh, did it in a, a decent manner. You know, did, did the job, did the blog justice. The rest of them just a joke. I'm definitely the best performer in the Midlands, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and everybody knows that. The next year or two, I can be the best in the country. I do know who else is good in this country. I won't mention no names, but uh, I'm knocking on their back door, shall we say. Thank you, thank you very much. And welcome to Las Vegas, the second half of my show. I'm so happy. It's not a pink Cadillac. It's a Ford Cortina Mark IV. It's seen better days. When it was in its prime, it was beautiful. Everyone thought so. People used to love to see it. The engine's uh, fine, but the body needs a lot of uh, work on it. The body's on its last legs. Perhaps one day it will get fixed soon. Thank you.